So with that, let's have prayer tonight. Um, Brother James, would you ask God to bless us? Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, we uh, seek your word, your holy word, Lord, your living word, Lord, Father God. May your Holy Spirit be among us, Lord, Father God, as you, you allow your preacher, your teacher, speaking to us. Give him favor and blessings upon us. Give him wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. And um, it's good to be in Bible class. Um, I just want to ask everybody one last thing before we get into Bible study, to be much in prayer. And uh, we got a lot of things that we're thinking about, a lot of things that we are considering, because we want to make sure that we do whatever we can to make the church what God wants it. And so we just want to uh, uh, ask you to pray as we pray, amen, so that going forward, that as a church, we can make the best decisions, we can do what's best for, for the work of God, for the people of God, and the program of God, amen, and so please re re be remember to pray for the church and pray for one another and pray for the community because we are endeavoring to be the best that we can be as it is pleasing. God. So we've been teaching about the cost or the price of discipleship. The cost of the price of discipleship. And I'm not going to go back and, and uh, go through every little detail, but I will give you the definition of disciple. Uh, discipleship simply means a dedicated follower or student of a teacher, a leader, or a, a principles, or what have you. Uh, it also means in the Greek, discipline one. Discipline one. And, uh, and of course, you know, when you speak of being disciplined, that means you're committed to something, you're dedicated to something, you're loyal to something, and you see things through. You don't start, you know, being disciplined is not starting something and then starting something else, and then starting something else, and then something, but never finishing. Amen. It's about uh, finishing. Amen. That almost sounds like me trying to get this with my wife being out of town, trying to take care of one task at the house. And then, you know, it's like, okay, but, 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 you know, because while you're doing something, you're seeing something else that needs to be done. And so, but you can't do that. You have to finish up one thing, finish up another, finish up another. Amen. And just continue to work. And, and it's good that you see a lot of things. And I thank God for all the things that he needs to do in my life. And you need to think of all the things that you need God to help you with. You can't do them all at one time. You need to think one thing at a time and, 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 and let God help you. And then go from the one thing. I'll never forget Pastor Olson shared years ago the way to do many things. Is one at a time. And, and that's simple, isn't it? But when you're looking at a lot of things that need to be done, it's very difficult, it's very difficult to, to, to stay on task and then go stay on task for the next thing, to stay on task. Staying on task takes discipline. Takes discipline. And so as God is working with us and helping us, don't get so caught up with, oh my God, I need help with with this and, and I need work on this and I need work on that and that, that that's fine make a list but stay
Stay on task. Amen. I promise you, as you stay on task, let God help you, then move to the next thing, and on and on. So anyway, then I use the scripture that we, that sing good to God, that was practical application to paying the price or, 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 or either the understanding that there is a cost to being disciplined. And it says in Proverbs 23 and 12, apply thine heart. Apply thine, now when you say apply, that's the cost. That means you have to give yourself to it. And most of us do not like giving ourselves to anything because we get distracted so easy or easily. And notice as I share, let me read the whole scripture. And then I'm moving along. Apply thine heart unto instruction, and thine ears to the words of what knowledge. Now notice that it doesn't say apply thine mind unto instruction. It says apply thine heart, because a lot of people have a mental ascension. To God, they have head knowledge. A lot of people have head knowledge. You can meet people and they can discuss the Bible with you from here to thy kingdom come. You have people that can debate the Bible. You have people that know the scriptures backwards and forth. My grandfather never claimed to be saved. My grandfather never was what you would call a minister or a preacher. But evidently, he read the Bible through and through. Because he had discussions with my mom, who, who my mom has been in church for for basically all my life that I can remember. And he, he made this statement to my mother. He said, baby, he didn't make a paper because she was a baby. He said, baby, I, he said, I know what the Bible says. He said, but I just don't understand how you do it. He said, I don't understand how you do it. And you see, in his mind, in his mind, you know, it was like, I know what the Bible says. My dad, when he was in prison, Read the Bible back and forth. My brother, who is getting ready to man, I, I salute my brother. My brother, I salute my brother. Uh, he turned 65 last year. He's retiring at the end of this month. He got married. I salute my brother. And uh, and he's and he's gravitating and moving to more and more and more towards God and towards the things of God. We talk more about God than we've ever talked about God. And so with family members, they're harder to reach than regular people because they view you as that person they grew up with. Or they, 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 they always try to view you as the person that they always knew you to be. And, and they will not give you that regard. So it takes a longer, it takes a period of time to win them to show them that you are different. You are different. So anyway, but anybody can have head knowledge. But when you apply your heart, what's the difference between, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, preaching a message tomorrow night about the body, soul, and the spirit. All right? And so and talking about how do you serve God with your, your, your mind, soul, and your body? How do you, how, a, a body, soul, and the spirit. How do you serve God that? And uh, we'll, we'll preach on that. But um, a lot of people serve God in their mind. But the heart is the seat of your behaviors. The heart is the seat of your activities. The heart is the seat of what makes you do what you do. So you have to serve God from within. Not just from a mental perspective. Now, mental, the mental aspect of serving God helps, but your heart has to be changed. Your heart has to be changed. And so, in preaching with the help of the Lord, we're going to talk about how when information comes to you, how the, the, the spirit, the, your spirit, which is your mind, how, how that comes into play, and then how your soul comes into play. So information comes into your spirit, to your soul, and then how your body 
is impacted as well. So we'll talk about that Sunday night, all right? But anyway, we'll leave that alone. Trying to serve God, my soul, and that thing. Man, that thing. But Brother James, I was studying and praying on that, man. It just came alive. It just came alive. But I, I, like, to, I like to throw things out there to whet your appetite. So, but anyway, because these are things that people are really dealing with and concerned about. So anyway, we talked about applying your heart. Do you apply yourself in serving God in your mind or in your heart? Now, if, you, if it's just all about knowledge, you're not going to get very far. The Bible says knowledge puffeth up, but the Spirit giveth life, right? And, and, and then, what did the Bible say in Romans 10 and 9, that thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thine what? Heart. That God hath raised him from the dead. He didn't say and believe in thy mind. He said, Romans 10, and I believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be what? Saved. So it is a discipline must be in the heart. It must be in the heart. So we talked about that. So what are some of the disciplines? What are some of the disciplines? Uh, or, or, the, or, or the prices that we have to pay. Uh, and Brother Tim, I appreciate you, brother. Uh, and I just I just said your name because I just happened to look at you at that moment. There's nothing in particular. Um, one of the disciplines that we have to pay when we come to God is the discipline of relationships. The discipline of relationships. You say, what do you mean by that? You have to be careful. You have to pick and choose. Uh, shall I use a terminology that, that we are more familiar with? You got to pick and choose who you rock with. <laughs> you got to pick and choose who you rock with. And I say that, I don't mean to be derogatory or negative toward the word of God, but it's important who you spend time with. As it relates to you disciplining yourself, getting yourself in a position to where you're changing, you're growing, you're maturing, you're becoming more and more of what God, you, it's important you hang around. It's important you have to be, it takes discipline to do that, don't it? It takes discipline, uh, you said, but man, I've been knowing these people for this many years, I've been knowing that person for that many years. I got a lot of people I've been knowing for many years. And I have relationships with them, but only on certain levels, right? Only on certain levels. We don't go out and do things together. We don't go because I don't want to be influenced of what they have going on. All right? So, but anyway, Luke chapter 14 and 26, the discipline, or what does the word discipline mean? You forget? Discipline. <laughs> <laughs> Discipline one. Somebody that is committed, somebody that is dedicated, somebody that is loyal to a cause, to a purpose, to, to uh, laws and what have you. Okay? A, 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 a group, church, what have you. All right? In this case, we're talking about loyalty to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. We're talking about being loyal to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And if there's any loyalty in this world, that's where I want to be. Loyal. To Jesus. Luke 14 and 26 says, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children, man, that's rough, isn't it? That, that, that's kind of, and brethren and sisters, yea, and, and even your own life, you can't even let what you want get in the way of what God wants. Now, it doesn't take discipline to do that, though. <laughs> it takes a lot of discipline to get self out of the way. Okay? And he, what did he say? He cannot be. If you let a relationship with your parents, your brothers and sisters, your family members, and even yourself, some of us can't serve God because we're too busy in a relationship with self. You, 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 you let self dictate when you do things, how you do things, the way you do things. I thought self was 
supposed to be crucified. I thought we were supposed to get set out the way. Isn't that what the Bible said? Then John say, I must decrease, and he must what? Increase. And John was so disciplined. John the Baptist was so disciplined that he, his head was cut off for, for Christ, for his testimony, for his relationship with God. Now, I'm not saying God wants us to go and get our head cut off, but it is a good example of someone that put Christ over his own person. Over his own person. And then there's other places in the Bible time won't allow me because I want to make sure I try to get as much information out to you as I can where people made that sacrifice. They put God first. They put God first. And then you have the um, uh, 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 what, what's that book about the martyrs. Uh, if you ever studied about Fox's book of martyrs, about different people, how they were willing to sacrifice their life for God. This one man was put in a barrel with spikes in and they rolled him down to heal. And, and in some cases they were told either denounce Christ or we're going to kill you. Hey, so be it. So be it. So Jesus said you cannot be. If you're going to put relationship now if God said you don't love your mom and dad is he saying he said Hate not, that means love less. In other words, love your family, but love God more. Love the, I love my mom, I love my brothers, my brothers and sisters, I love my nieces and nephews, aunts and uncles and all. I pray for them every day. I do, I pray for them pretty much every day. But I don't put them before God. I don't put them before God. I love my mom with all my heart. I love my wife with all my heart. I love my children with all my heart. But I don't put them before God. He'll tell you. The church comes first, God comes first. A lot of people don't understand that. A lot of people don't understand that kind of thing. But because I put God first, God takes care of us. And God meets our needs. And, and we have a rich, we have a rich relationship because God is first. And, I, and if you put somebody else before God, I promise you the relationship will not be as fruitful and rich as it could be. As it could be. Because God wants you to do something. Why is it that God wants you to not let your family, your loved ones, or any other relationship, friendships, all that? Why would he want you to love them more? Because the minute that God requires you to do something, you're going to let them get in the way of you doing it. You're going to put that over the will of God. And let's say... Uh, let's say, Brother James, like this morning, right? Let's say I was supposed to go and spend time with Raphael. And let's say his coach was going through something, but I had no idea. No one else had any idea. But God was going to use me to help his coach in some kind of way. But I decide, my wife, why don't you just stay at home today? Why don't you... Uh, let, let's go to the grocery store. Let's go do, you know, let's go do this. And I never go. And this man ends up doing something to himself when God could have used me to help him. God could have used me to say something to him that could have triggered something. The minute, and, and as it was, I'm not saying there, his coach, his wrestling coach. I never met his wrestling coach. But I know one thing. Raphael let him know about me. Because when I went up to meet the man, he said, how you doing, Reverend? <laughs> so I was like, how did you get And because Raphael's done his job. Mm -hmm. And then, you know who gave him? You know who gave him the car before I could? Raphael. Amen. He said he gave his wrestling coach my car. Mm -hmm. Well, not my car. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. What, what are we talking about? Putting God first. Yeah. Now, tell God was early this morning. Let me tell you. But that kid, you know, but it, it's like, the, 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 forgive me, I'm getting emotional. But the thought that all those young people, Raphael, and, 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 and perhaps maybe just being there to just be, just, it, it made a huge difference in his life. 
I didn't have to say a word. Just the fact that somebody showed up. Just the fact that in the summertime, Brother James would take him to cut grass and do, you know, do different things or whatever the case may be. So when I said, would you come and help me with the, come and help me, he didn't have a problem with that. Just come help me every Sunday. Well, I said, you can come every Sunday if you like. He's a great young man. Great young man. So anyway, put God first. Put God, now I could slept in this morning. Man, what in the world was to get up early on Saturday morning? But, when it comes to the things of God, that's all that had to be. I knew it was what, I didn't know all the reasons, but I just knew it was what God wanted. I just knew it was what God wanted. So I got up this morning, I studied, I was able to get some studying in before I left. That was a blessing. And, um, and, um, and that's where God gave me the message about the body, soul, and the spirit. So just think about it. I got up that early. I might not. <laughs> so, but anyway, we're talking about the discipline of relationships. It's important who you spend time with, who influences you, who, who, what kind of spirits that you entertain. Because it can influence you not to do what God wants you to do. And I don't want to be around people that try to influence me not to please God. Because that's my life's goal, is to please God. Is to please God. And um, let me see, I still got a few minutes. Man, I'm going out of that. I got a few minutes. So, the discipline of relationships means learning how to handle relationships, how to handle the, the emotional attachment that you have to people you love and people that you care about, but yet put God first. Sometimes that's a very difficult dynamic, but you have to work at it. You have to give yourself to it. And you do that by Practicing it by giving yourself to it and all of these things. 1 Corinthians 15 and 33 says, Be not deceived. Well, why, why, why do you think the Bible will say, Be not deceived? Because it's possible for us to be deceived, right? Now, you got people that are proud and arrogant and egotistical and they think that they're super Christian and they're pillar in the church and I got this, and, and uh, I'm the man, I'm the woman, and, 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 and I'm all this and that. But the Bible says, be not deceived, which means that it's possible that we could be deceived if we're not careful. Evil communications corrupt good men. And I love how Paul writing to the people of Corinth. Now, you have to know, you have to have a little background on these people. These, out of all the books that Paul wrote, the, the Corinthian people were some of the most corrupt, defiled, and low down and debased. There was even a guy who had a relationship going on with a close relative that had to be turned over to Satan. And, and there was all kinds of other things. You had uh, Diana, the goddess Diana, the sex goddess Diana that these people were worshiping and going to and, and getting involved. And there was all kind of uh, uh, things going on in Corinth. But yet, God established the church there and Paul was able to write these scriptures and some of it is very heavy, very heavy. And uh, he said, be not deceived. It's important to you who you hang around. So there was a lot of bad influence in Carl. So be careful. There's a lot of bad influence here in Pittsburgh. There's a lot of bad areas. And I'm not so concerned about bad areas. The bad areas don't bother me. It's that I don't go there and hang out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
I'll go there to visit somebody. I'll go over there to talk to somebody. I'll go over there to do whatever it is, God. I've done that many, many years in Detroit. My wife and I went into some of the most roughest areas to go reach out to people. There was times there would be guys sitting on the porch, drug dealers and gang members. I would, when we got out of the vehicle, I had to literally go over to them and let them know, look, I'm Reverend Woods. I'm not here for no trouble. I'm here to check on this person. I'm here to check them. By the way, if you ever want to talk, if you ever feel like you need somebody, get in my car. But other than that, I'm not here to make no problem. I'm not here because the first thing they see is you look halfway dressed up. They think they think you undercover. The they think you there to do. And I don't want them types of problems. And then one time a guy was up in the window and he was about to, man, he was about to do something. I had to let him know. So I'm not scared. But I'm not stupid either. You got to know how to handle your business. I'm not here for no, uh, no games. I'm, I'm not here to participate in what you're doing. I'm just here to work for God. I'm here to do my job. I'm going to do what I got to do, and I'm getting out of here. Okay? So, but evil communication corrupt good manners. I took, <laughs> I took one of my... I took Reverend, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Reverend Johnson's son, uh, Reverend Kinsey. <laughs> Reverend Kinsey came to visit our church in Detroit. And uh, Reverend Kinsey, at the time, he must have been, he was either the uh, 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 overseer, he must have been assistant general overseer, he was either the world mission director, but he was preaching revival for us. And we got our hit. We had on white shirts and ties, <laughs> and we were, we pulled up in a bad neighborhood in Detroit. Man, <laughs> and Reverend, Reverend Kinson still talks about this to this day. They said that he's told them in class, some of the seminary classes. They talk, you know, talking with them about understanding where you are and understanding what you're working with. They say he's talked to them about it in class. He's talked to them about it in preaching. There's a man, Reverend Wolf, took me to this, uh, took me to this neighborhood we got out, but we just let the guys know what we was up to, and we did what we had to do. The girl that we visited, Brother Dan, she brought 20 some people to church. Mm. Yeah, she brought, because we took the time to go to that bad neighborhood. What scared me though? She brought 20, she brought all her family members and friends and to one service. It was incredible. But because we put God first, and we didn't let that stop us, but evil communication, when you're around the wrong people, involved in the wrong activities, it corrupts you as a Christian who is trying to mature, trying to grow, and trying to become everything that God wants you. You got to watch the people you hang around. And it ain't nothing personal. Like when I go home, when I go home, I like to go around and visit and spend time with people. I don't go hang out with them. I just go see them, visit with them, and I'm out. How you doing? I haven't seen you in a long time. I hope everything's cool. Hey Amen. I'm at home. I just stopped by to see you. What you been up to? Then I go see somebody else. I don't hang out with them and drink and smoke and get high and do all that. I'm not, I'm not there to do that. They already know what I'm about. And then um, family members that like to go to the club and go 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 off in the dark and do. They never ask me. Hey, you want to go do this one? Because they already know. I've already established with them what I'm about. Don't ask me that. On my job before God allowed me to go full time, uh, when the guys would get together and they want to go do certain things, they wouldn't ask me. And if, they, and if somebody didn't know any better than they asked me, I'd let them know. I don't do those guys. I don't, I don't do that. Don't ask me that. I'm not getting involved in that. Now, if y'all want to just go eat, we can go do that and go have a good time. I'm not going to no bar, we're not going to no club, we're not going to the strip club, we're not doing none of that. Because I'm not trying to put my name out there in any kind of way. Above all else, I'm a Christian. Above all else, all titles aside and all that, the number one thing is that I am 
am a Christian. And that word Christian means Christ-like. And that's what I'm endeavoring to be. That's what I want. That's what I want. I'm, 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 I want to be more like Jesus. I want to be more like Jesus. So evil communication corrupts good manners. I want to uh, finish with this last one. I'm a minute or two old, so please forgive me for that. And next week, I want to talk about the discipline of prayer. The discipline of prayer. And uh, and I know some uh, some of you, if you be honest with me, you you can always say, Pastor, I pray too much. I, I, I pray too much, Pastor. I'm good with that. I'm, I'm, I'm being facetious. Oh, <laughs> being facetious. You know, who, who, who you know can honestly say you pray too much? No one. Amen. The discipline of prayer. But the last verse that I want to throw to you as we finish up the discipline of, of relationship. Not allowing ourselves to get entangled with people no matter how much we love them. Not putting them our love, our affection, our care for them over our love and our care and our and what he wants us to do. Okay? Proverbs 13 and 20. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise. But a companion of fools shall be destroyed. He that walketh with wise men shall be what? Wise. It's important who you hang around. It's important who you involve with. But a companion, now you know what a companion is. A companion is not necessarily a wife or a husband necessarily. A companion is just a person that you have a relationship with on some level. Friendship. But a companion of fools shall be destroyed. If you hang out with somebody that's foolish, that's silly, that use bad judgment, it, it's going to rub off. It's going to rub off. It just it normally does. It's going to rub off. And the Bible said you shall be. How many people over the years have gone to prison, not for committing a crime, but being with the person that committed the crime? An accomplice. If you hang out with a fool, you're going to become an accomplice of foolishness. That, that's what it is. Because when you see foolishness, you need to run from it. When you see things that's not suitable, you need to get away from it. Say, man, this ain't me. This is not what I want. This is not what I'm about. Hey, man, I'll talk to you later. Hey, hey, hey I'll talk with you another time or whatever the case may be. That's not my deal. What are we talking about tonight? The cost? There's a price that we have to pay to follow Jesus, to walk with him. And sometimes it costs us relationships, no. It costs us friendships. It costs us people who, they don't understand what you're doing. They think it's personal, but it's not personal. I still love you. I still care about you. But what God wants is more important to me than what you want. That's just how it works. And, and there's a cost, there's a price. That comes with putting Jesus first in your life. Now, of course, we know there's people that exploit that, and we ain't talking about that. Because they, they don't answer for that. We ain't talking about all that. We talking about in a real, genuine, honest, and sincere situation. You know what I'm saying? People that are honestly trying to do what God wants them to do. All right? So I hope and pray that there was something beneficial in this for you. I'm hoping and praying that that God bless you and helps you on your journey because that's what this is about and I, I, I probably um, I haven't officially announced this yet so I may start doing these Bible studies on Saturday nights from home. I may just start doing it from home so that we can focus more on the other services not having to come back and forth and then maybe even tweet some other things but we just want to do what's best for the congregation. All right? So just pray. Just pray. Okay? 
And um, I enjoy teaching and preaching. Amen. But at the, at the end of the day, we want to make sure we're impacting lives. We want to make sure we're touching lives so that God can continue to bless the church. All right? So let us pray. Father, we thank you tonight for your precious love. We thank you for these precious people. We thank you for keeping your hands upon us. I just pray that you continue to lead us and guide us and help us to be the best that we can be in this in these last and evil days, in the name of the Father, and of the precious Son, and of the precious Holy Ghost, in Jesus' wonderful name we pray, amen, amen. and amen. God bless you.